In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and you shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, let us instruct by the light of the Holy Spirit. Grant us by the same Spirit that we discern what is right and ever to rejoice in His divine consolation to the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So, a blessed day to everyone. No? Good morning. So, good morning. Um, this is our Advent recollection after three, two years. Oh, face-to-face tayo. So, <clears throat> siguro, naalala nyo last year, no? What is a recollection? Why do we need to recollect? No? So, pasadahan muna natin para at least maglagay tayo ng base. At para sa mga siguro baguhan na uh, makarinig what is a recollection, um, I can explain it through the lagay muna tayo ng foundation. No? Why do Catholics do a recollection? No? Focus on the word first. Recollection. Recollection came from the root word collect. The Latin is collecta, no? which means to gather. No? Gather. Mag-ipon. Bakit? Anong iniipon? Well, things that affects your life, mostly is spiritually. Hindi lang ito na mga ideas, concepts that can help your family, your work, your company, no, your profession, but more especially your life. What are those things that van- that are important in your life? Now, that collect, that collect will have a value when we undergo another important spiritual works in our journey. We call it retreat. No? Retreat. I think some of you have attended already retreat. The word retreat or how is retreat father first different from a recollection in a, a, a retreat? Recollection is done normally every month for Christians. Not only on Advent, not only on Lent. One one talaga siya ginagawa. On the other hand, a retreat is done only once a year. But the difference is that a recollection in one month, hours lamang ang nilalast. No? Kaya nga sa parokya, pag meron kami recollection, normally meron kami holy hour, confession, then the talk. So dito sa atin, may confession tayo, at talk. Wala tayong holy hour kasi um, <laughs> impossibly mag-expose ng blood sacrament, no? Now, in that hours that we spend during recollection, our focus is precisely on our life. Retreat naman, mas mahaba. It is normally, the minimum is three days and two nights. We're in, by the word itself, retreat, you surrender everything. Kalimutan mo muna ang pamilya mo. Kalimutan mo muna ang iyong trabaho. Kalimutan mo muna ang iba't ibang appointment. Because that specific three days of retreat, you only have to talk with God and God alone. And through the instruments of God, your spiritual director during the retreat, to guide you, discover more, how can you improve your spirit body? Kaya nga, at the end of a retreat, you will form one or two concrete resolutions about your life. Halimbawa, sa isang lingkod ng simbahan, no? sa isang lingkod ng simbahan, nine years sa siyang lingkod. Pero every time dumarating sa simbahan, kung oras ay alas otso ang kanyang serve, darating alas otso din. <laughs> Sakto. No? For a servant ng simbahan, hindi pwedeng Serve ka alas 8, alas 8 ko rin Papasok na si Father, saka ka nagmamadali. Wala kang preparation. So, a concrete resolution could be, Okay Lord, from now on, 
I will arrive 15 minutes before my service. That is a concrete resolution. No? Same way with us. No? Pwede sabi mo, from now on, Lord, every day, I will say the rosary. I will not miss it. That is a resolution. Marami pwede tayong improve sa buhay natin if we just examine ourselves in dealing with others, in dealing with our wife, our children, our co-workers, and daming pwedeng improve. That could be a resolution you can form in a retreat. Now, with that re resolution, monthly, you have to examine your improvement. Doon papasok ang tinatawag na recollection. Recollection actually have two parts. The talk and the examination of functions. Kaya yun ang naman dito. Kaya yung sabi, bakit nga recollection? Sabi ko kanina, collect, to gather. Re, again. Gather again. What do you have to gather again? Specifically, the resolutions you form during your retreat. Ano yung resolution na yun? Ikaw nakakaalam. Pero pagdating ng recollection, babalikan mo. Sa buwang bang ito, did I improve? Or during this season, nag ako ba ay umulad sa aking pangako sa Diyos na mas lalong maging mabuti? So that is a recollection. Now, since we are focused on the season of Advent, the tone of our recollection is precisely on Advent. But again, it doesn't mean na, uh, uh, Father, papano, ano, later on, we will realize that we will go back. Aside from the inputs that I will give you, I will allow you to examine in silence how you can improve. Kasi yung pinakamahalaga at the end of the day is Advent, ano Advent? Preparation? So what now? What do you prepare specifically? What do you want to change? Now, to start with... We have to go back understanding what is Advent. You see? Since this is an Advent recollection. If you would recall, naging tema ko na ito before, kaya papasadahan lang natin. Advent is the season of two comings. First, it is a season of the coming of the birth of Jesus. That's why meron tayong Pasko ng Pagsilang sa Panginoon. And second, the Parusia. Father, what again? Ngayon ko lang nandiyan ang salitang yan. Parousia. Parousia came from the Greek word which literally means the coming again or the second coming of Jesus with glory, with power, with majesty. Tandaan niyo po sa ating mga katoliko, naniniwala tayo, the time will come, Jesus will return to judge both the living and the dead. So maaari na dumating si Jesus, patay na tayo. Maaari na dumating si Jesus habang nabubuhay tayo. Because at the end, no one knows. May nakakaalam ba? No one. Sabi nga, only the Father knows when the Son will return again. And now, Advent invites us, since it is the coming, to prepare for that coming of our Lord. In what specific manner or ways? Ito po yun. First, since it is a two coming, when we talk about Christ for first coming, we are preparing to remember. No? Remembrance yung ating ginagawa. And part of that remembrance is to celebrate that Jesus, the Son of God, came into the world. Masayang mundo bakit? Dahil binigay ng Diyos Ama. God the Father gave us His only begotten Son to save us. Salvation came into the world. Second, Advent is a season also of Christ's second coming at the end of time. That one, we also have to prepare. Paghahanda ang rinapin. Ang muling pagparito ni Jesus. Kung saan, sabi ko nga sa inyo, Sabi ko nga sa inyo, Jesus will judge us. Of what 
have we been doing throughout our entire life. Pero mapapansin niyo that during the season, it is a period of devout and joyful expectation. Father, minsan po napapatanong na ako, doon sa una, indeed it is a joyful celebration, di ba? Kasi nandito si Jesus, kaya na meron tayong Christmas carols, lights, Christmas party, because we are grateful that Jesus came. Pero pag tinanong ko sa inyo, paano yung second coming ni Jesus that will judge us? Do you find it joyful or fearful? Ha, natatakot ka ba? O nananabi ka? Honestly. Pag sinabi natin, eh pa, paano? Wala nakakaalam. Christmas party mamaya. Pag alas Christmas party, boom. Jesus comes. What would you do? Ang iba nang sabi na sa akin, honestly, when they share, Father, hindi naman siya joyful. Ang totoo po, natatakot ako. Sabi ko, that fear na dala mo because you are not prepared. If you are prepared your entire life in meeting our Lord, you should be joyful. Bakit? Kasi una, lahat ng mga sakripisyo na ginawa mo, lahat ng mga pagpapakabuti, lahat ng pagsunod mo sa kanyang utos, you are joyful because you know that you will receive your reward. And that is to be invited in life everlasting. Parang ganun. Nakita niyo ng mga regalo. Wala pa yata ang raffle, ano po? Pero pag alam mo na na ikaw makakakuha ng television o refrigerator, no? nandun yung joyful na maiuwi ko to sa bahay. You are excited. Why are you excited? Because of the price, because of the gift. And for us Christians, we look forward. Yun ang binabantay natin. The joyful expectation. Lord, kung huwag ko, nagsumika pa kung maging masunurin sa iyo, naging mabuti ang aking pagkipag isa at pagkitutungo sa ibang tao, I'm happy, I'm excited to receive my reward. And that reward is to be invited in your kingdom in heaven. So, this is the tone of Advent. A devout and joyful expectation, be it on the first coming of our Lord or the second coming of Jesus. Now, what happens during Advent? Ano nangyayari? In these two preparations, may tinatawag rin na dalawa. The first is the remote or prolonged, malayo. Kaya ang Advent merong four weeks. Mapapansin nyo, there is an Advent wreath. We light the first candle, the second candle. Ewan ko kung memorize na yun, di ba? Yun ay mga symbols of peace, hope, joy, and peace, hope, joy. May kalimutan rin sa Father. Kalimutan ko isa. Peace, hope, joy, love. Okay? The love. Yun ang ano, kasi yung ano, ang isa, center sa mila si Jesus, pero tinanggal yun, kasi hindi na siya Advent Reef. Ang Advent is preparation. Now, the other preparation is the immediate or the short term. That is the nine days of Misa Aguinaldo. O Misa de Aguinaldo. Our focus, or rather my focus, kasi mamaya na magsisimula, is to invite you, prepare on this immediate preparation. Kasi maaaring nito mga nakaraan, busy-busy tayo. Pero sa nine days na ito, paghandaan natin. Kaya inaangyayahan ko ako kayo. Let us put our focus on what we call the nine days of preparation. We call Misa de Aguinaldo. Some call it Misa de Gayo. And for us, familiar, simbang gabi. Pareho lang iyon, iba't ibang termino, pero ipapaliwanag ko sa inyo. First, what is Misa Aguinaldo? Misa Aguinaldo consists of nine days of gathering, of prayer, of worship, 
in the form of the Holy Mass, starting December 16 to December 24. Father, 15 pa lang mao ngayon, but sabi nyo, mamaya na magsisimula. Okay? Well, they call it precisely, no? You anticipate ang Pilipino. Ang hili, manguna palagi, no? no? O, ang iba, wala pang Christmas. Carol's Christmas, like September pa lang. May kanta na tayo. Ang negative lang noon, pagdating mismo ng 25 hanggang January, Baptist of our Lord, that is the Christmas season, wala na nagsiselebrate kasi nasubrahan ng anticipation, no? Na, na, parang, okay, <laughs> ah, na overwhelmed now with all the celebration. Okay. But again, that's a nine days. The golden objective is this, to prepare the faithful in an honest and true devotion for the coming of the Savior. Ihanda kayo na talagang magkaroon ng tunay at totoong devotion. Kasi minsan, ito nakakalugod. No? Some attends the simbang gabi. Bakit? Kasi may kahilingan ako. Pag nakumpleto ko raw yan, sabi ni Lola, sabi ni Ganito, matutupad ang wish ko. More than your wish, first of all, it is our act of gratitude. Kaya nga tinawag ng Misa Aguinaldo. Aguinaldo came from the word Spanish as gift. Bakit? Because on the 25th, December, we will commemorate the greatest gift of God. Sending Jesus to us for our salvation. In return, in gratitude of that great gift, we return the gift. Kaya nga, na, yung tawag na exchange gift. Hindi natin mapapantayan ang biyaya na bigay ng Diyos. Pero in one way, we can return it by offering a devout and honest devotion by attending the Mass. Miss Aguinaldo, regalo natin yun sa Panginoon sa dakilang regalo niya. Kaya sa palitang iyon, nakita niyong concept, nagkakaroon tayo ng exchange gift. Manifestation of our faith. Okay? What is the origin of Miss Aguinaldo? The origin of Miss Aguinaldo came actually from Mexico. May hindi Mexico Pampanga, ha? Mexico as a country. Okay? Keep in mind, nalalahan niyo, ang mga simbahan ay merong tiyatawag na diocese and archdioceses, no? Or local church. Ang buong Pilipinas dati is part of the Archdiocese of Mexico. Ang ibig sabihin, ang ating obispo ay may nasa Mexico. Isipin niyo pag may problema ka dati. You have to go to Mexico just to, no, to ask for appointment of this priest, etc., etc. Doon ang simula yan. But concretely, on what kind of mass they call the Rorate Cheli Mass. Father, what? Rorate Cheli. Rorate Cheli <coughs> is the entrance antiphon of the Mass where it states, ito sa English, Drop down you heavens. It is a Mass dedicated out of devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Why the Blessed Virgin Remember that there is an image in Mexico very famous. Ano yun? Ha? The image of? Guadalupe. Now, the image of Guadalupe, baka hindi alam ng marami. Pambira ito kasi, mapapansin, marami yung image ni Mama Mary, dala niya si Jesus, di ba? But in this image of Guadalupe, was very miraculous and mysterious at the same time, look at, Mamaya pwede niyo tingnan ang mga explanation. Yung tiyan niya. May umbo. Because that image is precisely a projection. Not only projection, but <laughs> an image talaga 
that Mama Mary was carrying Jesus in her womb. So in honor, in honor of to, to Our Lady, the Mexican have that nine days of preparation before the birth to symbolize what? The nine days of the what? Nine months. Ah, sorry, nine months. Childbearing. Childbearing, precisely. Dinadala ang isang bata sa loob ng sinapukunan ng ina for nine months. Every day of the nine days signifies the nine months that Jesus was in the womb of Mary. Nakuha po yun? Ngayon, dahil yan sa mahal na Mirhen, nadala rin natin yan na misa dito sa Pilipinas. Lalo-lalo na na ang ating dibusyon sa mahal na ina ay labis-labis. Just to give you an idea, no? during the time, alam niyo ba na ang pagbasa sa misa, paulit-ulit lang, ang prayer sa misa, paulit-ulit lang, for nine days. In fact, there is a... In fact, um, sa nine days na ito, ang ibang pare, hindi nagbibigay ng homily. Because it's just the same. What is important is to attend the Mass. The picture here is actually the Rorati Chelimas. What can you observe? Una, daming kandida. Dapat ang unang ma-observe, Father, ba't madilihin? Di mo ba? Sa kalamang nilagyan ng kandila. The reason behind it is that it is done during dawn to give way to those who will be working in the fields and farms. Madaling araw para ang Rorati Chelly. Unang dahilan para sa mga magsasaka na magkatrabaho. Ikalawa, may penitential purpose. Nine days yun. Ang pinakamahirap sa lahat, subukan nyo ha, challenge ko yan, ay ang gumising sa umaga para pumunta sa simbahan ng siyang na araw. Penance yun. Pero at the same time, at the same time, remember this, it has a symbolic image. Anong image? Tandaan nyo, madaling araw nagsisimula. Dark ang surroundings. Okay? Magmimisa ang pare. Pagmisa ng pare, darating yung tiyatawang na portion na Eucharistic prayer. Yung tiyatawang na after the sanctus. Doon iko-consecrate ang bread at ang wine. For us Catholics, when the bread and wine are consecrated, it becomes what? The body and blood of Jesus. By that time, the, 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 the moon, I'm sorry, the, the sun starts no? rising. Nagkatapos ang misa, maliwanag ng paligiran. Very symbolic. Because that nine days of Rarati Chelly Mass, anong pinapakita sa atin? Before the coming of Jesus, the world is in darkness. But with Jesus coming, the world received light. So tatlo pa lang, pahiwating nito. Una, for the workers. Second, penitential. And the symbolic coming of Jesus being the light of the world. Tinawag ngayon dito sa Pilipinas na dinagdagan Misa ni Gayo, maliwanag naman siguro, kahit sa madaling araw, ang mga tandang the roosters, no, starts to crow. Ngayon, tinawag rin siyang simbang gabi or after work. Ito, maaalala to ng mga super seniors dito siguro sa inyo. Before Marshall, no, walang simbang gabi. 
Yes. Simbanga may happen only after martial law or during actually martial law. Bakit? Curfew. May curfew. Hindi ka pwedeng lumabas. So the Catholic bishops decided not make it earlier, 5 in the afternoon, 5.30, para wala pang curfew, makauwi ka ng iyong bahay. And at the same time, you comply the what? The nine days of preparation. After the martial law, naging dalawa tuloy. May misa na nakasanayan sa gabi at ang misa na nakasanayan sa umaga. Eh, Father, ano mas maganda? Pareho misa naman yun. But the difference is the penitential. Bakit? Mas madaling manatiling gising at dumano sa misa kaysa yung gigising ka sa umaga at dadalo ka sa misa at manatiling gising habang nagminisa. Kaya penitential. Okay? So, but then, it's the same as. Ang ano lang doon, ito yung may setback, may reservation ako. Kapag sa simbang gabi ka dumano, may isang araw, mamimiss mo ang readings. Bakit? Kasi ang Saturday sa pa-Sunday, same ang readings niyan. Pag tumapat yan. Pero ang Saturday na umaga at Sunday ng umaga, magkaiba ang readings. Okay? Observe it on the 17, 19, 18 is the Sunday. Okay? Now, having have that background about the Advent, I told you that our focus is on the nine masses, novena masses, the simbang gabi. Let me now share with you and examine the contents of the nine days of Miss Abinaldo. Ito ah. Advance na ito sa inyo. Anong mga mangyayari? No? So meron na kayo kung, kung may exam. Ano? Alam mo na kasi binigay ni Father Mark. Ha? <laughs> so, the first reading and the gospel is about this one. This is this under title. My house shall be called the house of prayer for all peoples. Handa niyo yung phrase, all peoples. Clue yan kagad. Sa so, gospel, although it talks about John, about the burning and shining lamp. It is the call of John, not only to the, to the Jew, but to everyone. What kind of call? To understand it, let me share with you the summary of the readings that you will be hearing this evening. In the first reading, God has a plan of salvation which includes both the Jews and the Gentiles or pagans. But for this plan to become a reality, the basic condition to be fulfilled by all is to observe what is right and to do what is just. Doon muna tayo sa first phrase. Tandaan nyo that during the time, God called the people of Israel, the Jews, as His chosen people. Salvation is within them. But with the coming of Jesus, the salvation now is not anymore exclusive to the Jews. Kasi kung ganoon, abay tayong mga Pilipino, hindi tayo maliligtas. Because we will be part of the Gentiles of the pagans. But the coming of Jesus is an opening na hindi lang sila ang maliligtas, kundi lahat will have the benefit of the salvation that Jesus will do. Sa Gospel, Jesus is the promised Messiah sent by the Father. Both, this is what we will hear, John the Baptist and the miracles Jesus himself performs give witness to this. Ang lahat ng himala na gagawin ni Jesus ay pagpapahiwatig muna na ano? Na siya ang tinutukoy na tagapagligtas. So in other words, the first day of the nine days is an introduction to us of what will happen to the history of salvation. Okay? Next, second day of Misa Ginaldo. Reading, hindi nagbabago taon-taon. From Genesis, 
29, uh, 49, 2, 8 to 10. Nakatawag pansin, the scepter shall not depart from Judah. Papaliwanag mo bakit yun ang title later on. And again, in the gospel, we will hear the genealogy of Jesus Christ, Son of God. Mapapansin nyo, para hindi nyo mamiss, picture pa lang, alam mo niya, family tree. Okay? Kaya, iiwan ko pala yung notes na yan. Uh, you just have to listen, no? Para maalala nyo, ay, ito kong kopya ni Father na iniwan. So, every year, hindi nagbabago lang. Except, ito lang, except, pag dumaan ang fourth Sunday of Advent, Saan man siya doon? December 17, December 4, December 20, this year, December 18, papalitan ng readings na iyon ng 4th Sunday of Advent. Ang binibigay ko sa inyo, the plan ng readings for 9 days as it is um, included in the lectionary. Now, with this, ito ang summary. Sa first reading, huh? Genesis tayo. As old Jacob is about to die, kilala niyo si Jacob? Ma? Jacob? Who's the father of Jason? Good. And Isaac, who's the father of Isaac? Abraham. Which we will hear in the genealogy. As Jacob is about to die, he gives his son, Judah. Ito ang son ni, ni, ni Jacob. Ito ang son ni Jacob. Sinabi niya dyan, isa si Judah. Blue. Twelve apostles. Labing dalawa. Labing dalawa din. Twelve apostles, twelve tribes. 12 sons because Jacob later on will change his name to Israel. So background lang tayo para at least alam nyo, kayo gusto gusto kong basahin ng Genesis, tanong-tanong mga telenovela niyong pinanoon. Totoo. Isipin nyo ito ha, nasa Bible. Kayo gusto gusto kong eksena nito eh. Si Jacob, may liligawan siya. Si Rebecca. Ha? Pero nang matapos ang mahabang courtship, ang iligaw, ang binigay ng tatay, yung ate. But again, eh, gustong gusto niya talaga yung kapatid, nagtrabaho muli siya. At the end, nagkaroon siya ng dalawang asawa. Okay? And then, ito pa masakla. Ang bawat asawa mayroong katulong. Okay? At ang masama pa, dahil nagpapaliksa ng dalawang magkapatid, parehong pinasiping ng iba't ibang gabi ang kanilang mga katulong. Ending up, summary, ha? summary. Sa asawa niyang una, tatlo ang anak niya. Sa asawa niyang pangalawa, tatlo ang anak niya. Sa katulong ng unang anak, tatlo ang anak niya. At sa huli, tatlo. Four wives with three children. Ilan lahat? Well, yun ang naging foundation ng bayan ng Israel. The twelve tribes of Israel. Kaya mabawin din ninyo ang mga pangalang si Levi came from the priestly um, lineage. So si Judah, isa. Dito ngayon, The ancestor of David and Jesus, a special blessing which is the prophecy about his tribe, outstanding position among other tribes of Israel. This prophecy was found its perfect fulfillment in Jesus Christ, the son of David. In this narrative that we will hear, first reading, sa second day, anong binabagit sa atin? May prophecy na about Jesus Christ coming from the lineage of Judah. And here, we will listen to the genealogy of Jesus Christ, 
God has promised Abraham that in his progeny, all the peoples of the earth would find a blessing. He also promised David his dynasty would last forever. The long genealogy that follows proves that Jesus Christ is the one whom those two promises are fulfilled. Mahaba man iyon. Kaya minsan may irit ako. Ano ba gusto yung sasabi ng parang ito? Anak ni ganito. Anak ni ganyan. Anak ni ganito. Ano pa kaya alam ko dyan? Pero ang totoo nun, habang pinapakinggan mo yun, the fulfillment of two promises. First to Abraham and second to David. That the Messiah would came from their lineage. We, we move to the third day. The third day will come, the first reading will be coming from Prophet Jeremiah. The title is that I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. And in the gospel, we will hear now that Jesus was born of Mary, the betrothed to Joseph, son of David. The gospel is about picture. And that's a picture. Hindi si Mama Mary yan. It's Joseph. The dream of Joseph. Okay? That's right. Okay? So this would be the summary of the readings. The prophet Jeremiah has a beautiful words of hope for the afflicted people of Judah. A righteous descendant of King David, the Messiah, will lead them to days of peace, unity, and justice. But on the gospel, we will hear about what? God's plan to make his only son a descendant of David found a serious obstacle in Joseph's decision to break his engagement with Mary. But soon things were put back on course thanks to Joseph's perfect obedience. No? Kaya siya dinanaw ng angel. Okay, next day. Ewan ko kung mamememorize ko ito ha, pero yan ang mga clue na mangyayari. Yeah, I will do that. Ah, iiwan ko yan yung susundan nyo. By the way, yung 18, this year, hindi nyo maririnig yun. Bakit? Sabi ko nga, ang 18, gagamitin natin ang 4th Sunday of Advent. So, mapapalitan yun. Now, on the 19th, 4th day of Misa Aguinaldo, the reading will come from the book of Chattis. Ito maganda. The birth of Samson is announced by an angel. May nakakaalala pa ba sa inyo kung sino si Samson? Ha? <laughs> talaga kilala. Magkasama talaga ang partner na si Delilah, no? Pero sino si Samson, no? No, about dito ni Samson, kinuha siya because of their parallelism. The announcement of birth of John the Baptist Ano parallelism na iyon? Let me show you. The extraordinary is conception of Samson by a barren woman foreshadows the conception of John the Baptist by the elderly barren Elizabeth. Pareho ang kanilang ina. Pag barren, alam niyo po, sa Bisaya, meron yung tawag siyang word na sa babae, laon. Ha? Nilipasan na. Pero sa Diyos, walang ganun. Pag inusto ka, mangyayari yun. Kaya sabi ko sa mga lingkod ko ng simbang, kasi meron tayong mga lingkod na hanggayon walang asawa, magtiwala lang kayo. Ha? Magtiwala sa Diyos, hindi sa iyong sarili. Ha? Kasi malay nyo, dumating pa rin. It's never too late, no? Ay, nagawa niya. Accordingly nga, there was a study. Yan ang mga gusto ko siya mga komentari sa, sa Bible. No? There was a study that how old was really Elizabeth nang nanganak? That's right. Tinatan siya rin lang. 80 to 82 years old. Siping niyo yun. Lola na yun. <laughs> Super lola. Pero nanganak pa rin. No? There's nothing impossible. And in the gospel, we will hear. The conception of John the Baptist as an important step in the fulfillment of God's plan. So sa mga tuwid, dito, fourth day ito, nakita nyo? This is Zachariah, the gospel, in the gospel, visited by Angel Gabriel. 
So afterwards, pwede yung ma-memorize ang gospel na ito, yung mga pangyayari. On the fifth day, another visit will happen. Anong visit na yun? Mary. On the gospel. But, ito maganda. First reading, nasabi na ni Isaiah, Behold, the virgin shall be with child. Nakita na nila na mangyayari ito. But they do not know when will it come. Only to the gospel now. When the Gabriel visited Mary, doon nila nakita. Kaya nga, just to give you, on the fifth day, they call this the Emmanuel prophecy. Nagbigay ng pahayag sa Isaiah about the coming of the Emmanuel, the Lord within us. No? And it will happen through the conception of a virgin. And here, the Annunciation marks the beginning of the fulfillment of the Emmanuel prophecy uttered by Isaiah. By giving her assent to God's plan, Mary most holy conceives virginally and will give birth to the long-awaited Messiah. Alam niyo, minsan kapag nabibay ang nang talks na ganito, ang gusto ang gusto ko minsan, ay yung sinachallenge. Father, paano po yung kay Mama Mary, ano? Paano siya nag-conceive virginally? Minsan ba nagtatanong kayong ganoon? Ha? How is it possible for a woman to conceive virginally? Hindi na galaw. Huh? Science would dictate na ano? In order for an embryo to be formed, ano kailangan? Sperm and egg. Paano sa mga labihin? Walang nagtatanong, di ba? Hindi kayo pwede mga theologian. Uh, sa theology, we answer that questions. How is it possible? Kaya ginawa nila para mas madali, ilagay sa angelus, she was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? That's the easiest. But actually, in the original Latin text, walang power doon. Walang word na power she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Pero nung translate sa English, nandun ang power. Bakit? Kasi mas madaling intindihin pag may power eh. Pero pag walang power, We just will. Because you do not need a power, you just need the will of God to happen. Pag inusto ng Diyos mangyayari, that's His greatest power. Okay? Now, after this, the fifth day, we go to the sixth day. Anong nangyari? Natapos ang usapan ni Maria at Nino. Ni Jesus. So, anong nangyari? Ayaw nila yata ang bumalik. Anyway, Bakit? Hindi ko lang siya makita. Okay. Next. On the sixth day, this will happen. The visitation. Kaya kung meron na kayong idea, no? Una, genealogy. Susunod sa genealogy, Joseph's dream. Susunod Joseph's dream, Annunciation kay Zakaria, Mary, and then visitation. Ito maganda. From the book of Song of Songs, another prophecy. Tingnan nyo ha, ibang ibang libro sa lumang tipan, may sinasabi sa mangyayari sa hinaharap. One of the contents of book of Songs says, Hark, my lover comes, is springing across the mountains. Ito mga, with God's grace, no? Uh, February, makakasama ko si Ma'am Elena sa Hulilan. From the peak of Ayin Karim, pakikita mo tinutukoy na mountains. Because Judea o Ayin Karim, bulubuntukin siya. Kaya hindi, yun ang isa sa mga challenge pag pupunta ng Hulilan. We will walk Bakit yun? Kaya sa nasabi ko na, exercise, exercise when you are here. Kasi pag hindi, we will check ka pataas. 
$50 dollars yon, ha? Okay? Kaya-kaya. So anyway, may mga kasama naman tayo yung underage, no? So that's the, ano, because that's a mountain. We will really walk. Hindi naman sa Grand Payera, pero mountainous ang area. Ganun din. Kaya nga ako sabi niyan, Mary went with haste. No? To the mountainous region of Judea. And we will see that. Okay? Now, in the gospel, we will listen to the greetings of Elizabeth. And how does this happen to me that the mother of my Lord shall come to me? United. Yung dalawang readings ulit. Mapapansin nyo. Come now. This is the content of the first reading. The happiness of Jerusalem originated from the presence of the Lord. Now, this foreshadows the joy experienced by Elizabeth in receiving the visit of Mary Mosoli, who was carrying in her womb the Savior of the world. That's a marinig natin sa gospel. No? The visitation. The words of Elizabeth to Mama Mary. Blessed fruit of the womb of the Virgin Mary. Okay? Mapapansin niyo? May connection na. Hindi na umapalso. Pagkatapos doon, recitation, on the seventh day, we will listen to the continuation of that recitation, the Magnificat. Wherein Mama Mary will, song, will give that song of praise to God. But again, connected. Tingnan nyo. Galing na naman sa Old Testament. First Samuel, Chapter 1, Hannah gives thanks for the birth of Samuel. Who is Samuel? Huh? Prophet, sinasabi rin na um, Prophet King. Kasi doon na ang magpapalitan, di ba? In the history. So, he will be a prophet. He will, in fact, he will call David, the king. Siya magtatawag. And in the gospel, we will hear that same content of thankfulness, of gratitude from the lips of the Blessed Mother. Kung seventh yan, ano mangyayari sa eight? Oh, wait muna. <laughs> Advance si Father. Etong laman noon no, sa, sa kanta ni Hannah. The gift of a baby boy filled Hannah with joy and gratitude, her offering the child back to God and the hymn of thanks in the response of her son foreshadowed the manifestation of Mary's gratitude. To the Lord as expressed in her Magnificat. Alam niyo meron Tagalog yan. Ang puso ko'y nagpupuri, nagpupuri sa Panginoon. That's Magnificat. Tinagalog lang. Okay? In the Gospel, we will hear the Magnificat of Mary. Now, on the eighth, this will happen. Ang mangyayari sa eighth day, from the prophet Malachi, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the day of the Lord comes. Sino yun? Hindi nang si Elijah yun nila. The birth of John the Baptist. Just to give you the summary. Malachi, the last of the prophets, tells us that the coming of the Messiah was to be preceded by the return of Elijah as the precursor, the prophet of fire. Pero hindi Elijah ang pinadala. Another person by the name of John the Baptist acting, calling the people. Same way that Elijah was calling the people for conversion. But this time, it would be John the Baptist. Kaya sasabihin niya, prepare the way of the Lord. And in the gospel, we will hear his birth. The birth of John the Baptist. Okay? Now, Afterwards, eh, Father, meron pa bang susunod? Ninth day na ito. Ano kaya mangyayari sa ninth day? The content now is this. The kingdom of David shall endure forever in the sight of the Lord. And in the gospel, the day break from on high has visited us. Ano mangyayari? That is now the song of Zachariah called Benedictus. Ano yun, Father? Keep in mind in the first reading, we will go back, no? 
God is never outdone in generosity to David when intended to build in honor of the Lord for the Shabbat Temple. This time, ang pinakamaganda ng pinanganak si Jesus, ano, ng pinanganak si Juan Bautista. Naalala nyo, tahingit ang kanyang tatay. Napipi, kasi nyo naniwala. Tinanong siya, what name will you give to your son? Hindi siya nagsalit. Hindi siya nagsabi. Give me a tablet. Nagsulat siya. He will be called John. After that, nalusin ang kanyang dila. Nakapagsalita siya. And the first thing na kanyang sinabi, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. That is the song called Benedictus. Anong nilalaman doon? A prophecy, what would happen to John the Baptist in fulfillment doon sa prophecy ng una, first reading. And what will happen to the precursor, Jesus Christ. Natapos ang nine days, nakafocus ngayon sa pagdating ng Nusaya on the 25th. Now, in that nine days of readings that we passed through, anong findings natin? Apat. First, the readings are all about the first coming of Jesus. Bakit? Kasi ito yung tiyatawag ko nga sabi ko sa inyo. The immediate preparation the shortened preparation. Ang focus na hindi na sa second coming. Ang focus ng liturgy is on the first coming of Jesus. Kaya kung meron mong panahon, maglalagay ka ng bilhin, ng Christmas decor, ang iba dito nilalagay. Kasi ang focus mo precisely on that events. In fact, may kilala ko, ang kanilang bilhin, gumagalaw. I mean, gumagalaw, nagiging, ano tawag nito, um, kwento. Kung anong gospel sa araw na iyon, iyon ang bilhin nila. Halimbawa, si Joseph, naalala nyo? Yun ang una, di ba? Pagkatapos sa genealogy, si Joseph, dinalaw. Kaya nandun si Joseph at ang anghel. Sa mga bilin, may San Jose at may Angel. Tama, mali. Okay? Susunod. Pagkatapos doon, dinalaw rin si Sagaraya. Dinalaw rin si Maria. So, yun ang mga eksena na pwede mong gamitin sa bilin. Hanggang sa kapanganakan ni Juan. Pero at the end, bilin will end with the birth of Jesus. Yung minsan makikita mo sa bilin, Nandun na tatlong hari. No, normally, the three kings, sa epiphany mo pa, pwedeng ilagay para mas maganda. If you are following the readings, the purpose of that belen is to no, is to help you contemplate the scenes of the gospel, what is happening, so that you can follow those details in the life of the coming of our Savior. So nothing of the second coming. Second finding. The first readings are prophecies. Napansin nyo? Lahat sila propesya. At ang maganda pa, coming from the different books in the Old Testament. Now, the first readings are connected to the gospel. In what way? Prophecies, first reading. Gospel, fulfillment. Umbaga, itong propesya, itong pangako, Pagdating sa gospel, ito ang katuparan. Natubad ang pangako. Kasi isa sa pinapayag sa atin, God is always faithful to His promise. Tandaan nyo, salita ng Diyos ito. It is God talking to us when we are listening at ending the Mass. Kaya ikaw na tumatanggap ng salita ng Diyos when at ending the Mass, you have to believe it that this will happen. Third, fourth finding. In the gospel, we were introduced to the closest people to Jesus. Kunti lang, ano? Sino nandun? Mary, Joseph, 
John the Baptist and the couple Joaquin and Anne. What for? Mula sa mga tao ito, actually, you can learn from them how God prepared each one of them for the coming of the Messiah. Balikan natin. Paano hinanda ng Diyos si Maria? Look at the annunciation. Paano hinanda ng Diyos si Jose? Look at that visit of the dream. Paano hinanda ng Diyos si Zachariah and Elizabeth? Go back to the narrative that we have heard. And even John the Baptist, paano siya hinanda? Because that handa of preparation is a call to us that Jesus comes, ikaw ngayon, paano mo pinaghahandaan pag tinatawag ka ng Diyos? Are you really prepared for the coming of the Messiah? So that question is precisely, what is it for me? O nalaman ko yan, Father, nine days, eighteen readings, ano yun para sa akin? It is an invitation for you to prepare. But to help you prepare, let me place this. Let us examine now our ourselves. This is the second part of the recollection. For you to recollect, for you to, to go deeper. Hindi ako magkutulong dito sa'yo. Ang gagawin ko lang, I will place you. Questions. At the end, you have to answer it silently. Four major questions. Every major questions, succeeding question that, help, that can help you answer the main question. First main question. Do we find joy in our relationship with God? Is it maganda pala itayong mo? Nanon pa ba yung kaligayahan mo na meron kang ugnayan sa Diyos? Because nowadays, with the modern society we have, mas mahabang relationship natin sa cellphone. But not with God. Help, to help us no, answer that question, I place this verse from Matthew. Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. Ang iba kasi takot na magkaroon ng ugnayan sa Diyos. Nilalagay nila, hindi ako karapat dapat. I am a sinful. Lord, leave me. Leave me. Leave me. To help us answer, am I close to God? Or do I have trouble seeing God in my life? Do that answer. Do I try to convince God to prayer to give me what I want? Minsan, lumodulog lang talaga tayo sa Diyos para hingiin ang gusto natin. Pero sa unayan, sa relasyon, minsan maganda rin itanong, Lord, ano naman ang gusto mo sa akin? Third, can I enter into relationship with God trusting that God can work through me? Next, second general question. Do we recognize ourselves as children of God? Kinikilala mo ba ang iyong sarili bilang anak ng Diyos? To help us that, go back to the prophet Isaiah. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you the sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall name him in one help. Do I have a healthy relationship with myself? Minsan, sa ayaw natin makipagunayin sa Diyos, nakatoon tayo sa sarili-sarili natin. But when we take care of ourselves, is it really the right care for oneself? Sobra-sobrang you know, pangangalaga. Ang iba, sobrang tulog. Ang iba naman, kulang tulog. Sobrang kain. Or not abusive, no? Inaabuso ang sarili. Do I believe I carry the life of Christ within me? Sa pananalita natin, sa pag-iisip natin, sa pagtatrabaho natin, 
do I carry Christ in me? Yun ang goal natin sa buhay. Na dumaki ang punto na ang mga mga kahalubido natin masabi, ang taong ito, tunay na Christian. Kahit anong gawin mo sa kanya, kasamaan, pwede ito ganyan, papatawarin ito. Hindi magtatalino sa mga ng loob. Do I believe that I can birth Christ at each moment that through my actions and words, He can take flesh and be manifest to the people around me? Ganda niyan. In the parishes, mga lingkod, sa inyo. May mga tao talaga tayong makakasama. Minsan, sa sarili nating bahay. Pero nakikita ba sa ating pananalita? Mismong si Jesus. Sabi ko nga, in one of my homilies, no? Masimbahan. Sabi ko sa kanila, lalo mga daily mass goers, ano niyo minsan ang hirap natin mga kaapit na ibang nagsisimba? Kasi kahit araw-araw tayo magsisimba, pag uwi sa bahay, ang bibig natin, kung ano-anong salita, ang lumalabas. Talo pa natin ang demonyo na, no? Saan natin? So, ating palang salita, ating action, it should manifest that you should come out. Next, third general question. Do we listen to God's call in our lives? Let me use Matthew 3.3. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight His paths. Nanawagan ng Diyos, gamit si San Juan, gamit ang Ibanghelyo. Nakinginig ba tayo? Do I live in thankfulness for what God has given me instead of desiring what others have? Minsan, ang Diyos binibigyan ka na ng mga biyaya. Pero tingnan mo, bakit ang biyaya sa kanya mas marami sa akin? Ba't siya ganito? Tantandaan mo kapag ang Diyos nagbigay, alam niya ang makakabuti sa iyo. Don't question him. Malay mo, darating ang alaw, araw di tao nga, in God's perfect time, may ibibigay sa'yo masigit na dyan. Value now what He has given you. Second, can I measure my life success by loving faithfulness to God's call rather than by material success in human praise? Ito nakakatakot na yan. Sinusukat ng maraming tao ang iyong pagkatao sa narating mo sa buhay na ito. Malaking bahay, ari-arian, kotse. I'm sure doon sa mga may hiling mag-tiktok. Nabasa niyo ba yung paulit-ulit ng mga labas? Saan sabi niya? Ang respetong binibigay sa iyo ay depende sa trabaho mo. Narinig niyo na yun? Because that is human praise. Let me share with you a story that really gave an imprint in my DNA as a priest. Sa mga na I think familiar, I was spent. I mean, I was sent to to Spain to study my philosophy and theology. During my second year pastoral exposure, I was assigned sa isang parokya south of Spain in the town of Lurca, province of Murcia. There was an old priest there who was that hindi fame, eh. yeah? hindi fame kundi the opposite of it, no? <laughs> Infamous talaga siya. Hindi naman siya notorious pero meron siyang ganong marka sa tao na hindi nakipag alubilo, mahirap um, napitan, no? At kung ano sila sabi nila, in my two months there, never talaga kung nag-challenge sa kanya na kausapin. But days before going back to the seminary, I asked him, can I talk to you? I said, sure. Nag-usap kami dalawa. Sabi ko, ang mga pare doon, hindi tawag na padre. Tatawagin mo ng padre pang religious. Pag dahil sisa ng tao kay Don, no? hindi dahil mayaman ko. That's the greetings of father. Sabi ko, Don, ganito. Sabi ko, alam niyo po ba na ang tingin ng mga tao sa inyo dito sa parokya ay masunit, hindi madaling napitan. 
Kung ano pa pang napaka-negative. Sabi niya, Mark, kung palagi kang nakasalalay sa sasabihin na ibang tao sa iyo, wala kang magagawa sa mundo. Ito tandaan mo. Huwag kang matakot sa sasabihin ng ibang tao. Ang matakot ka ay ang sasabihin sa iyo ng Diyos pagdating ng panahon na sa hindi mo ginawa. Bumaon mo. At ang ganda ng pagkasabi sa Espanyol, no? Because Spanish you can pray with words. We look for human praise. But if we are in front of God, what would God say to us? Fourth general question. Do we joyfully give flesh to the gospel in our relationship with others? Let me use again Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Let us ask ourselves. Do I help feel the essential needs of others as Jesus did? Do I feed the hungry, give water to those who thirst? Do I clothe the naked? Do I visit the sick and the prison? Alam niyo po, these are the seven corporal works of mercy. Every year, nagagampanan ba natin ang lahat ng seven? Kahirap yun. Ang pinakamayarap sa lahat ay dumalaw sa preso. Kaya dahil mahirap yun, yun ang ginagawa ko every January. To bring things. Shampoo, sabon, towel, toiletries. Maging mga babae doon, they need a hygienic no kids. They will be, be very grateful. I'm telling you, every year, at least yung itong iyon, checklist, bakit? Dahil sabi nyo ni Jesus, what you did to the least of your brethren, you did it to me. We will make an account of it. Do I hide behind social media instead of creating face-to-face relationships? Itong mahirap sa mga kabataan ngayon. Virtual na. Hindi marunong mag. <laughs> Magigito mo sa ibang tao. But that's supposed to be. And it's last. We ask ourselves, in my family, do I communicate my love and care in a sincere and direct way? Mahal na kayo considering yun. Kasi minsan sariling bubong, hindi tayo nag-uusap, hindi nakikita. Kaya tanong ko minsan, mga asawa, when was the last time you said, I love you? To your wife, to your husband. Pero ganda rin, tanong sa mga anak, mga magbura na dito, when was the last time your children, no? Said, Mama, I love you. Papa, I love you. Let just to share with you again. Gusto gusto ng nanay ko. Siguro dahil tumatanda ang mga magulang. No? Pag sinasabihan sila, miss you, love you. Minsan mapapatawag ka agad para balikan yun. Sinaasar ko, sabi ko, pautang naman po. <laughs> But just like, you know, uh, biro lang, biro. Pero ang punta ko, ay, hindi ko lang. They appreciate it. Kasi kung saan nga sabi nila, the means of communication is so fast and simple, hindi naman tayo araw-araw nagpapadala ng message, a simple message that, I love you, I miss you. Tama po ba? Libre na nga yun, only text na, pero hindi mo mapadala yan. Communicate your love. And care in a sincere and direct way. Okay? Now, if you would notice, I placed four questions. Precisely to answer this one great question this Advent. How are we growing this Advent? Lumalago ba tayo? Spiritual speaking. Lalago tayo kung yung mga tanong kanina nasagot natin in silence. In what ways could I grow or change in my relationship to God this album? 
Sabi ko nga, ang ilan, kaya naman palang dumano ng isa, madaling araw pa. Araw-araw for nine days. But di mo gawin araw-araw. If you really want to value that relationship with God. Second, in what ways could I grow or change as a child of God this Advent? Do we still keep our prayer every night, lalong-lalo na pagpagod ka? Kasi yung challenge sa atin, pag-uwi sa bahay, pagpagod, ang unang matutumba, hindi, hindi ikaw, ang dasal. Kasi sasantabi mo na, Lord, maunawain ka naman, sige na, matulog na po ako. Bukas na tayo mag-usap. In what ways or ways could I improve how I listen to God's call in my life this Advent? I'm not sure if you have tried this, no, but I, I will encourage you. Sa ating mga parokya, meron tiyang tawag na adoration chapel. Or kung wala man, even the parish. Sometimes you do not need to open your mouth to talk to God. We just have to look at the tabernacle and say, Lord, I have a moment here of silence. I want to listen to you. Hindi ko alam po kung anong level na ng bawat isa sa, sa spirituality. Kasi sa mga lingkod ng simbahan, iba-iba din po ang level ng spirituality. Ang iba talaga, sabihin natin nasa advanced level, ang isa sa basic level, ang isa beginning. Pero iba-iba rin ang ilan nila. Hindi ibig sabihin, mas batanda ito, mas mature yun. I assure you, hindi ganoon. Kasi minsan kapag ang Diyos magsasalita, minsan nakakatakot. Bakit? Ang challenge sa'yo, mahirap eh. Dahil sasabihin sa'yo, do you really want to hear me? This is what I want you to do. O di ba yung taong ito, kagalit mo pa rin? Anong gagawin mo para magkasundo tayo? Can you give a smile? Can you approach that person? In our prayer, ganun yung isa ng Diyos. Ang pinapagawa sa'yo, may hirapan ka. But that is what He wants. Reconciliation, forgiveness. O pamisa sa pamilya natin. O ba't kayo magkapakin na kayo? Pareho tatay mo, pareho nanay niyo. Ba't di kayo nag-uusap? I'll be honest with you. You know, even in my prayer, minsan nabatakot ako kapag pinahayaan ko ang Diyos magsalita. Kasi may mga pinapagawa rin po siya na sabi ko ang kira. Kaya kung pwede lang takpa ng tayo ng Lord, tama na muna. Hindi <laughs> ko kaya ngayon. Because God will always talk to us. The question is, are we willing to listen? And not only listen, going to do what He wants. Kasi sinasabi natin, Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Kapag nagkasal ka ngayon, doon sasabihin ng Diyos sa iyo, This is my will. Can you do it? Mayroon na. Four, in what ways or ways could I improve my relationship with others this Advent? Product in our prayer. May mga tao ba tayo na agrabyado? May mga tao ba tayo hindi pa rin kabate? Or whatever it is. What is important is deal with those persons. Mas maigi bilang krasyano tayo na magpakumbaba. Huwag na nating aantay ng panahon na ano kung saan huli ng lahat sa kapalamang hingi ng sorry. In my 12 years in the ministry, hindi ko na pong mabilang minsan yung mga anak kung saan nagtanda, pupunta. Hindi naman confession, kundi hingi na ng payo. Father, anong gagawin ko? Namatay na lang ang magulang ko. Hindi ako nakapag-usap sa kanila. Hindi ko sila napatawan. Sa so, tapatid na. Kung hindi maganda ang pakikitungo mo sa sarili mong kaluho, sa iyo, sa sarili mong pamilya, at ano pa sa ibang tao? Diba? Kaluho mo yun eh. Pero hindi mo kayo mapatawa, hindi mo kayo makausap. Kaya nga, ang ganda ng panahon ito, a season of preparation, inihahanda tayo na talagang pagdating ni Kristo, pagdating ng kanyang kapanganakan as we celebrate it, wala tayong mga dalaga na mabibigat sa ating puso sa ating kalooban. Okay? Now, let me invite you to stand.
and join me as we end with this prayer. We, we, we pray it slowly together. We thank you and praise you, Word made flesh, for your presence with us, around us, and through us, for making our world a hallowed, holy place, for giving a human touch. Fill our hearts with joy as we enter into the celebration of your birth, as we welcome you once again, and as we joyfully await your final coming in glory. Amen. The Lord be with you. And the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, good morning. Let us now prepare for the Mass. Hopefully, um, I've shared no yung aking nang bahagi sa inyo. Umanap sa inyong mga puso, isipan, at magawa ng pagbabago sa buong spirituality. Good morning again.